I'm back, and this time you should be able to hear me. I just wanted to see how many people were actually paying attention. Thank you, uh, Marissa, others, for uh, letting me know that there was no sound. This is another Plague Time edition of Elmira Baptist Church's Daily Update. And the quote for today comes from William Carey, a famous missionary to India. He said this, There are grave difficulties on every hand, and more are looming ahead. Therefore, we must go forward. This is the Daily Elmira Baptist Church update for Monday, July 20th, excuse me, uh, July 27th, 2020. And we had an encouraging uh, day yesterday. Morning, just beautiful weather. Uh, thank you to Jesse and to Duane who worked so hard to get some large uh, sun sails up. And they provided just beautiful shade in the morning and also in the evening. The afternoon, a little bit warmer service, obviously. But we noticed something in the um, afternoon. I had warned Mitch McCormick, our missionary speaker for that evening, just to be careful uh, because there might be trains and there are short trains. Just hold off for a second. If they're long trains, you might just have to preach through it. But then by the end of the service, not one train had gone by during the preaching time. So we're grateful for that. And we're grateful that some of you who have uh, not been able to join us when we were meeting inside the building have been able to drive in, drive your cars up, and uh, participate in that way. Still working through technical uh, details. I think the video yesterday morning actually went the whole time. In the evening, I know there were lots of problems. And that problem is, is one of those that's, that's out of my hands. What we've chosen is we've chosen a system that can both be plugged into a wire and that can work wirelessly. And we did that on purpose. Uh, several reasons, but one good result of that has been we can take this system outside. We don't need wires. The only problem is when there are no wires, then it attempts to take that signal that encodes both the sound and the, and the video, the visual and the audio, and it pushes it through LTE, which should have plenty of bandwidth for the signal that we're sending, but we're still discovering that sometimes, I don't know, uh, things go on and it's not coming through the way we would like. But God's good, and we're just going to keep working at it. I'm not sure that we can fix that problem of the live stream freezing up as easily as some of the problems that we've uh, been able to fix in the past. Now, did you get a chance to watch Mitch McCormick's video at reachingperu.com? I took some time to watch it since we met last night, and it's, it's an encouragement to you. If you'll watch it, it expresses their heart. It's well done. And you'll get a better vision for what their plan is, uh, and their heart is, excuse me, for the country of Peru. I've also posted his sermon online at YouTube, the church's YouTube channel, and at Sermon Audio under Elmira Baptist uh, Church in California. And if you didn't get a chance to watch it, especially, I know some of you, you tried and the live stream was terrible. Please take some time today, if you would, to go back and watch his sermon, listen to his sermon, it's only about 25 minutes long, and again, well done. I want you to understand his heart for Peru and the way the Lord has worked in his life. Now, I have some good news as well. And again, last night I mentioned this. Some of you were unable to catch it last night, or maybe you tried and the live stream was so bad you, you gave up. So let me give you some good news that came out yesterday afternoon. You need a little bit of background. Elmira Baptist Church got started back in the 1950s. Uh, one of the first men that was saved was uh, um, Orville, and he became a Christian along with two other men, and they started what became the nucleus of Elmira Baptist Church. After uh, Orville was saved, he invited his family to come to a revival service here at this new church, and that's when Nita Jacob's father was saved. And Nita was saved about that same time. Orville's daughter, this would have been Nita's cousin, her name was Patricia. She was also saved about this time. And it, just an exciting time. Anytime there's a new church and God's spirit is working, and boy, that's an exciting time. And I hope that you'll experience some of that in, in your lifetime. But here's my point. Um, Orville became a Christian through his influence. Others in his family became a Christian. His uh, daughter, Patricia, eventually moved to Kentucky, and when Orville passed away, his wife um, also moved to 
uh, Kentucky to be closer to her daughter, Patricia. Well, Patricia has always been a part of uh, Elmira Baptist Church, always had a heart, excuse me, for Elmira Baptist Church. She had a part back in the 50s and 60s growing up, and then she moved away to uh, Kentucky. But she still continues to follow our, our progress, and she noticed we had a building program. And the Lord laid it on her heart to give us uh, $4,000 toward our building program. $4,000 toward our building program. So thank you, Patricia. And just another reminder of God's faithfulness to his people. Uh, I, had the, uh, I have to include this detail for you. Nita shared it with me yesterday that Patricia went to her pastor. She's still a faithful Christian in church. She's just in Kentucky, so she can't be a part of our church. Went to her pastor, said, here's what the Lord has laid on my heart. Are, are, are you comfortable with me sending this money to another church's building program? And the pastor said, if that's what the Lord wants you to do, you do that. So praise the Lord for pastors who are not jealous, not trying to hold on to every little dime that they can, but are, are, are willing to let their members give to other causes as well. And again, thank you, Patricia. Now, let me remind you, seven o'clock Wednesday night, we're going to have our midweek service by live stream. Uh, there will not be anyone meeting there at the building. We'll live stream that. And I hope you'll set aside time Wednesday night after the live stream to take some time to pray, which is the focus of our devotional this morning. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. And let's look at some well-known verses and consider what they mean for us. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read verses 13 through 18. Well-known passage about the armor of God. Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now Ephesians 6 verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now we're going to focus on verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. We need to pray. Not talk about prayer. Not, uh, you know, put up a big sign, prayer meeting, and, and people show up and we sort of gab for a few minutes, have a cup of coffee and go home. N not uh, write long lists of prayer requests and then put them in a folder. Uh, not Our secretary does a great job every week getting, getting our prayer requests out, and we get that piece of paper, and then what do we do? Fold it up, put it in our Bible? But do we take time to pray? You remember last Sunday, the first Sunday that we met outside, we just had some pavilions out there. And in the uh, morning, we took those pavilions after the morning service, and we put them down so that they would not... Be, have any more wind influence than they did. So when I arrived on, on uh, uh, Sunday after, excuse me, that was Saturday after, afternoon, we put those down. So when I arrived on Sunday morning, those pavilions were down. They were only maybe, I don't know, three or feet, four feet off the ground. And Kurt was there and he said to me, he said, uh, you know, you'll have to preach on your knees. And I said to him, a preacher should always pray from his knees. You know, what I meant by that was prayer is important. I can prepare a great sermon. I can have it worked out in my mind. I can have all the logic behind it. I can have the verses. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, it's just words. At best, it's my heart trying to communicate to your heart. But when we have at our services the power of the Holy Spirit, it's God's Spirit speaking to our spirits and that's when lives are changed. And that's where the enthusiasm comes from in a church. I mean, we can work up enthusiasm, human enthusiasm, by having the right, uh, uh, having the right uh, program and having the right music. And, but that's man-made. We're not interested in man-made enthusiasm. We're interested in enthusiasm that comes from the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to pray. Pray for Elmira Baptist Church. Pray for me. Pray for the um, uh, other members of the church. 
And I know many people are sick and I don't want you to avoid praying for the sick. But what I want you primarily to pray for is the power of the Holy Spirit to be evident in me and in you and to be evident in our church. Because in this time of of change and difficulty, it'd be easy to just say, well, let's just hold on until we know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. It could be months before, it could be years. Someone asked me the other day, was it true that the Spanish flu continued for two years? That's true. There were four different uh, resurgences of the Spanish flu around the world. Two years, 1918, 1919, and even in 1920. Listen, let's not just hang on. Let's go forward on our knees. Because most of all, what this nation needs to see, what the United States needs to see, is people who are committed to seeking God, who have the power of the Holy Spirit on their lives, and it's changing the way that they live. That's my challenge to you this morning. Remember, God is still in control. He always has been. He always will be. We'll meet again tomorrow. So Mindy tore through here and bumped the camera and the whole thing. So she, oh, really? Yeah. She was trying to put her in the... It's, it's only, it,